In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I welcome all of you to this Mass. And today the Lord will be speaking to us in a very powerful way, reminding us of the essence of the law, which is love. We're going to listen to the gospel where Jesus corrects our wrong understanding of what the law is for. And today we offer this mass for Ebele Obi, birthday intention. And as usual, we bring all our intentions, our expectations, our worries, in fact, our whole self to the Lord because he takes all of those to himself, blesses them, brings consolation and strength to us. If we are worried, if we are stressed, this is the moment to bring all of those to the Lord. And today happens to be the birthday of Lee, one of our altar servers. So he's there, he's here to give thanks to the Lord for many years, 13 years. Well done. And recognizing the holiness of our God, we know how weak we are. We ask him for pardon for all our failings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity Make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Be friends with one another and kind, forgiving each other as readily as God forgave you in Christ. Try then to imitate God as children of his that he loves and follow Christ by loving as he loved you, giving himself up in our place as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Among you, there must be not even a mention of fornication or impurity in any of its forms or promiscuity. This would hardly become the saints. There must be no coarseness or salacious talk or jokes. All this is wrong for you. Raise your voices in thanksgiving instead for you can be quite certain that nobody who actually indulges in fornication or impurity or promiscuity, which is worshipping a false god, can inherit anything of the kingdom of God. Do not let anyone deceive you with empty arguments. It is for this loose living that God's anger comes down on those who rebel against him. Make sure that you are not included with them. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light. The word of the Lord. Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, 
but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who ponders his law day and night. Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves shall never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they like winnowed chaff shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Try to imitate God, children of his that he loves. May we stand for gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who for 18 years had been possessed by a spirit that left her enfeebled. She was bent double and quite unable to stand upright. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are rid of your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And at once, she strengthened up, and she glorified God. But the synagogue official was indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, and he addressed the people present. There are six days, he said, when work is to be done. Come and be healed on one of those days, and not on the Sabbath. But the Lord answered him, Hypocrites, he said. Is there one of you who does not untie his ox or his donkey from the manger on the Sabbath and take it out for watering? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had held bound these 18 years, was it not right to untie her bonds on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his adversaries were covered with confusion, and all the people were overjoyed at all the wonders he worked. The Gospel of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm today, the response says, Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. And of course, once we start talking about imitating God, we begin to wonder in what way can a human being, with all our weaknesses, our wrong judgments, our limited understanding, how can we actually imitate God? Is it possible in any way? Well, if the Lord has said it, then it is possible, because every word of God is true. But how do we understand this invitation of today? Try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. The first part is try to imitate God, and that's given. That's the invitation. But for us to know how to imitate him, we need to look at the way he loves us as children of his that he loves. When God invites us to love, he's inviting us to allow him to love through us. We don't know what it means for God to love as God in our own understanding, but we can only grasp a little of what it is when we look at the way God loves us. And this is more evident when we look at the event of the cross. Because from Genesis, we see signs of God's love. 
how he related with his chosen people, Israel. How they always walked away from his precepts and God came back to bring them back again. Often due to their confusion and the weakness of human flesh. They turn away from the path of safety, but God comes back, brings them back again. And they will cry from the depth of their pains, and God comes again, brings them back. And at some point in Hosea, God will say, how can I ever abandon you, Ephraim? How can I do that? Because whenever I think of this, my heart recoils within me. The passion, the compassion of our God, his love towards us. But again, when we look at some of the images in the Old Testament, we begin to wonder, yeah, what sort of God is this? You know, we hear about, I'm going to do this, and how people were taken into exile, and we wonder, how do I actually imitate God? Do I imitate him in those things? The Lord is just in all his ways. But then all those images we saw in the Old Testament that actually sometimes we worry about it, looked forward to the perfection of the event of the cross, where God now reveals what it means to love. That love you don't love from a distance, actually you give yourself. He gave himself to show how much he can go in loving us. So, the invitation today is for us to imitate God in the way he loves us. He loved us first, and he invites us to imitate him. Look at the way I understand. I understand you. I accept you. I forgive you. I grant a second chance. I do not judge you with your past. In fact, every moment is new. I forget the things of old. I do not remember them again. I tell you, start now, for it is a gracious moment. And he invites us to treat others the same way. People will offend us. Things will go wrong, wrong around us. We hear terrible news about what people have done. And God is saying to us, imitate me, how I overlook your sins and treat you as if you've never sinned. He says, try to imitate God as children of his that he loves. Now, can we do this on our own? It's impossible. We cannot love as God loves us without the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord needs to come and fill our hearts. Yes, we have received him in our baptism, but if you read the scripture, there's always new moment of infilling, outpouring of the Holy Spirit to fill the human heart, to strengthen us, to continue to re-examine the way we treat our neighbor to re-examine the way we treat ourselves because we are his children that he has loved. Maybe there are people that have offended us. Maybe there are people who have really wronged us so much and we are wondering, no way, no way. Yes, indeed, with our strength, we cannot forgive. Even when we want to, we find out that we can't because the grace to forgive comes from above. The grace to truly love without condition attached to it comes only from God. So we pray that this invitation will not pass us by, that we will not hear it and then it goes that way. That this invitation will come to us with power and grace to help us to love as we have been loved. To understand as we have been understood. To accept others 
as we have been accepted. Sometimes the laws, even the religious laws, the liturgical laws, the laws of the church could become a hindrance. Sometimes we have certain laws around us, both the ones in the society, we misinterpret it and they become, as it were, obstacles to us reaching out, being courageous to love beyond our boundaries that the society set for us. And this is what happens in the gospel of today. Jesus heals a woman that was bound by evil spirit. And people are complaining on the Sabbath day, how could you heal? So what's the point of the law if it goes contrary to just love, charity? May the Lord help us to understand this. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of us, heaven and earth are good. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to each certain, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving him thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. You have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished <coughs> by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent, St. Louis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The power and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sin. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, Lord. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Just a reminder, we are to remain seated until told to come forward by the stewards. Okay.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. So have a lovely week ahead, okay? Enjoy the week if you can, okay? And just be strengthened in your journey as we move on. Okay, I'm sure the Lord is with us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.